Hello everyone, this is Alan Hernandez, your fellow classmate in uh, Calculus 3. Um, today we're going to be going over one of the problems inside of the final review. Specifically, we're going to be looking over problem 2 on 15.1 uh, vector fields. Alright, this problem is describing, is showing you a vector function, vector field function, and it's actually asking you to figure out whether it's conservative, and if it is conservative, to find that potential function of it. So here's the vector field. So right away, we can use uh, theorem 15.1, which helps us determine whether it is conservative or not. And so that theorem is if the partial of, I believe it is m over the, or rather with respect to x, and the partial of m with respect to y. If these two partials are the same, that means they are indeed conservative. So therefore, we need to find this partial and this partial. So this partial uh, of the j component, we're supposed to find it with respect to x. And then this partial with respect to y, since we're going in the i direction now. So let's find this out. So the partial of, of m with respect to x is just uh, the 10 comes down. So that's going to be 10 multiplied by x to the ninth. And the this partial here with respect to y, we're just removing the y up there. So that's going to be 10 x to the ninth. As you can see here, they're actually equal to each other. So therefore, it is indeed conservative. Well, now that we know it's conservative, we got to find that potential function. And what that potential function is, all it is is um, the gradient of that is supposed to be equal to this vector field. So we know, we know our vector field, which is, so first off, let's actually get our definition here. The gradient of our potential function that we're trying to find, it can be some f of x, whatever, or some f, some f of x, y, is equal to our vector field here. And we know what our vector field is right here, because it's defined right here as 10xy i hat plus x to the tenth j hat to the ninth. And so, since we know that this is equal to the gradient of our potential function, we can simply integrate just like we would. So we're basically taking the gradient in the opposite direction. So just like you know with the normal gradient, you first take the partial with respect to x, put it in your i component, you take the partial with respect to y, and put it in your j component. So therefore, we're going to be doing those exact same steps here, but in the opposite direction. So let's start off with our i component. Remember what I said earlier? When we're taking, when we're finding the gradient of a function, we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x, and we're placing it in the i direction. So here we have our i component. So all we have to do is do that exact same step in the opposite direction, which would mean we have to integrate in the x direction, with respect to x, rather. So if we integrate this with respect to x, we keep our y constant. So we get a x to the tenth times y. And this is our, so this is after integrating, after integrating with respect to x in our i component. So now we gotta do the same exact same process with our j component. So here we have our j component. When you have your gradient, you're, you're first taking the partial derivative with respect to x and putting it in, in your i component, and then you're taking the, the the partial derivative with respect to y and placing it in your j component. So therefore, since we're working with our j component now, we must integrate with respect to y. So when we integrate this function here, our j function, with respect to y, we're just adding a y on there since we have a constant. We know we have an x there, but since we're doing it with respect to one variable, that can be counted as a constant, so we're just adding a y onto there. So in the end, you would get x to the tenth, which was there before. And remember, we're, we're integrating with respect to y. Now this is a constant, therefore we're just adding a y on there. And so that's the integral of, with respect to dy in direction j. And so, 
since we integrated and we don't have any limits, we know that both of these are going to have some kind of constant. So we have x to the 10th y plus, and this is in the x with respect to x, therefore we're going to have some kind of constant that's with respect to y. Because think about it, when you take this, when we have this function here, if we take the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, sure we're going to have this function left over because we have an x in that, in this area here. But if we have some kind of function that's only, uh, that only has some kind of variable y, it's going to be treated as a constant, so it's going to be removed. So let's, so we know we have some kind of function there that's g of y, and we have this other one. When we respect, when we integrated our j component, we got left with x10 multiplied by y, and in and in this case, since we were integrating with respect to y, we're going to have the opposite of this, which is some kind of function with respect to x. And as you can see here, there's there's no other indicating factor telling us that there's some kind of other function. As you can see here, when we integrated with respect to x and y, we got the same function, and we didn't get any type of constant. Therefore, that's actually our last our last function. There is no constant in that in that case. So after integrating and realizing that there are no constants, we can just let this be x to the tenth minus uh, multiplied by a y. And so we've determined that it is indeed conservative. And this is its potential function. Cool. Thanks for watching.